Hi, welcome to the Just Ask Drew video series. Just Ask Drew is where Drew answers all your questions about high-end headphone audio. In this video, Drew covers his top picks for portable headphone setups. Hi, I'm Drew Baird from Moon Audio, and today we're going to talk about portable headphone amps. I've got a large selection here, as you can see, and this is probably about half of the ones we sell. But these are probably my favorite, and for different reasons, and different configurations. The first I want to talk about is the Sony PHA-1. Uh, notice the bling on the iPod. Uh, I had to steal a bunch of iPods from my kids, so, so sorry about this. Um, this piece is a very nice piece. It'll do both digital output from your iPhone, iDevice, iPod, etc. Uh, it's got a USB input for that, as well as you can do a USB input from your computer laptop and stream audio that way. Um, the great thing about this portable amp over all others is the noise floor, which is incredibly low. This is probably my favorite pick for using with in-ear monitors. In-ear monitors tend to be very sensitive, very easy to drive, and very susceptible to noise. So for, for a very sensitive IEM, this would be my pick for the portable headphone amp uh, DAC to go with your IEMs. There's no reason you can't use it with a full-size headphone, but it, I think it really shines with IEMs. The battery life is exceptional good, between somewhere 8 to 10 hours, with a, uh, with a recharge time of about 4.5 hours. Um, it retails for $4.99, street price is around $3.99, and that's what we sell it for. Uh, a very nice piece. It's got a gain setting for both low and high impedance headphones for your IEMs or your full size, a volume control, uh, an analog audio input, uh, your headphone output, which is a mini jack, and the two USB inputs that I uh, told you about with a switch to go back and forth between all of the inputs. Uh, very nice piece from Sony. Sony uh, is coming out with a new version, the PHA2. Uh, I don't have a huge amount of details on it yet, but I know that it's going to be able to do DSD audio, which will be a first in the portable uh, uh, headphone amp DAC arena. The next piece I'm going to talk to you about is the Fostex HPP1. Uh, this piece has been around for a little while now, but it's probably my best bang for the buck all-in-one piece. Um, it's got the USB input, exactly like the Sony, an analog input and headphone amp, uh, output on the front uh, section of the amp, uh, your volume control. Uh, and interestingly enough, on the back, it's got a Toslink digital output. So actually, you can use this as an interface between your iDevice from Apple and your uh, home stereo. So you can stream digital from any of these devices. This has an Apple authenticity chip in it, like the Sony, that allows you to pull that digital from your device and then output digital into your stereo system. So it's a nice interface piece as well as a portable piece. Uh, it's got a gain section uh, for switching between high and low impedance headphones. Uh, and it's also got a filter for the digital chip. Basically, this is the slew rate at which the D to A does its processing. You can do a sharp or a gentle, which will basically smooth out the sound, if you will, in the gentle and sharpen and make more detailed in the uh, sharp filter. Um, it's got a line output as well, in case you want to send an output to your car stereo or your home stereo, uh, if you don't have a digital uh, input on your home stereo. So pound per pound, this is probably my go-to best bang for the buck all in one piece. Uh, very nice from Fostex. It's recently just been reduced uh, from $649 to $549, so it's definitely a best buy. The next pieces I'd like to talk about are from a company called Cypher Labs. Cypher Labs first came out with a piece called the Solo R. This is their new version, the Solo DB. They still have the Solo R, and there are a few differences between the two pieces. First, I want to note that this is not uh, a, a combination headphone amp and DAC. It is just an iDevice DAC. Uh, the differences between the DB and the R, the R will only let you output digital from an iDevice into it and will output either a digital signal or an analog system, uh, signal. Uh, with the DB, uh, they've actually added the ability to switch back and forth between an iDevice and your laptop. So this one is laptop friendly or any PC friendly in that you can send a digital signal USB into this piece and it'll sense whether it's an Apple device or a computer device. It has the same digital output as well as an analog output and the kicker is that this one is not just single-ended like the R but it's also a balanced stack. So if you've got uh, one of the new balanced amps, say the SR71B from Ray Samuels 
or an ALO RX3, uh, then you'll be able to output a, uh, a balanced analog signal into that portable uh, amplifier. So this becomes a little bigger of a stack compared to the Fostex and the Sony. And by going to separate pieces like this, uh, you've done a few things. The first thing is you've increased the battery life because now this one piece only has to do a digital to analog conversion and you're letting another piece do all the amplification for your headphone amp. So this will last a little bit longer than a combo piece as well as it has the ability to improve the detail and quality of the sound. It's sort of like with your home stereo when going from a receiver to a separate preamp and amplifier. By separating those two pieces out from each other, giving them their own dedicated power supply, you, you greatly improve the quality of sound by going to separates. And that's what's going on here. Now Cypher Labs has come out with a new piece. This is an all-in-one amplifier and DAC, not just a DAC. It's called the Theorem 720 DAC. And it's basically a combination of the Solo DB and a new headphone amp that they've designed in here. This piece has an amazing battery life. It lasts about 14 hours um, and I haven't even tried to really push it with, say, a set of IMs. I think maybe we probably get about 18 to 20 hours with those. It has the same balanced architecture as the Solo DB. It not only has a single-ended output for headphones, but it also has a balanced output for headphones. Uh, you cannot use both of these at the same time. I warn you, with a lot of these balanced portable amps, do not use the single-ended and balanced at the same time, and do not use a balanced to single-ended adapter for a pair of headphones that are single-ended. By shorting the two uh, circuits together, you can damage the amp. So this amp has uh, also a line-out, which bypasses the headphone amp in it, which you can use just like the Solo R and Solo DB to basically connect one of your iDevices from Apple to your home stereo if you desire. Um, it doesn't have a digital output like the Fostex, but it'll give you a really clean line output. This piece does 24192. Uh, the Sony will do 2496, and the Fostex will be, do 24192. The only bad thing about that is that Apple has not gone to a higher resolution bitrate with their products. Currently, you can only output a digital stream rate of 16 bit, 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. Uh, this is okay if most of your collection is Redbook, but as high resolution audio becomes more prevalent, websites like uh, HD Tracks and Blue Coast Records are now allowing you to download all kinds of high res uh, um, audio files. So it becomes more important that the DAC section be able to do 24192, and hopefully at some point soon, Apple will revise their software to output higher bit resolutions. But with all of these, you can use, if they have the USB input option for a computer, you can do those high resolution files with these pieces. Because the 720 DAC, like the DB, will also not only do iDevices, but you can connect a computer to it. The next piece on my list of uh, top portable uh, setups would have to be the JH Audio 3A amp. And, and I've got the uh, JH-16s tied to them with a cable because this is really a package situation. Um, you can't really use one without the other. Uh, Jerry has gone with a DSP six-channel amplifier in here, whereas basically each one of the six channels is operating each one of the uh, three drivers in the right side and the three drivers in the left IEM. So um, it's, it's a little more complicated in connection. You can't use your normal IEMs with it. You've got to use one of their 3A specific IEMs uh, with the JH3A amp, and it's basically got double the inputs as the normal JH Audio IEMs. Um, right here, we're, we're showing our Silver Dragon JH3A cable. Um, it's basically double the wire of the Silver Dragon V1 IEM cable, and it's a wonderful match for this system. Uh, this piece is uh, got to be just one of the best all-in-one portable packages. It is a true reference system. I absolutely love it and highly recommend it. Um, it's got a bass control on it, a volume control on it, and a um, multi-port input that can be used for both analog and digital input. It's also got a USB connection, so you can pull digital from your PC. You cannot use this piece with an iDevice unless you team it up with maybe one of the Cypher Lab, either Solo R or Solo DB. Uh, probably using the Solo R since this is a single-ended input. Um, 
So you can do a digital output from the solo into the JH3 or an analog. I'd recommend doing the digital. By keeping everything in the digital domain in this piece, I think brings out the qualities of the package. Um, the crossover network is still maintained inside the IEMs, but there is some DSP correction on the amp channels based on whether it's a mid, high, or low frequency driver. Um, a real, real fantastic uh, piece of equipment. Um, the next pieces I'd like to talk about are from a company out of the Netherlands, uh, Cables. They've produced a line of headphone amp and headphone amp DACs called the iCube. This is the version one iCube. This is what started it all off. Um, it's an analog only input amplifier and it looks very much like a flask. I think it's very sexy looking. Um, so what I'm using with it is just a basic iPod with an LOD cable that's pulling analog out and inputting it into the back. So it's a simple piece that it only has an analog input on the back and a headphone input on the back and a charging jack. There is a switch in the front for an impedance uh, uh, for low headphones and high headphones and a power switch and a very, very nice smooth volume control. So the other unit from iCube is the iCube V3. It's actually the third generation product. The V2 has actually been discontinued now. The V2 was basically the headphone amplifier section from the V1 and they added a USB DAC section to it. The USB input was capable of doing 16-bit 48 kilohertz inputs and could be connected to your PC or your laptop. Uh, the IQ products do not have an Apple authenticity chip, so it can only be used with computer or other digital products. And so when they went to the V3, they've improved some of the headphone amp section, and they've added some more digital inputs. So while they still maintain the 1648 kilohertz uh, USB input, they've upgraded and added uh, a 24192 uh, uh, coax, and USB digital input, as well as all of these products have the standard analog input on the back. And it's got the similar impedance switch and volume control and uh, power button uh, on the front of the chassis. Uh, the, the size is a little bit bigger than the V1, uh, fits a little bit better with the size of uh, the new iTouches and iPhones, etc. I've got it currently connected to a Cypher Lab Solo so that I can pull digital from an Apple product and you can either choose to do a digital output or an analog output from that Solo R into the iQ V3. Uh, so you can leave it up to yourself to decide which you like the better sound of. They each have their pluses and minuses and benefits uh, so you, you can make that decision. Um, some other noteworthy products that aren't listed here, uh, Centrance has a very uh, nifty product that's coming out very similar to uh, the Cypher Labs 720 DAC uh, in that it's uh, a balanced nomenclature like the, Cy like the Cypher Labs. It has a lot of the sim similar inputs and outputs. It's got a little more power uh, than the Cypher Labs, but the battery power isn't on par with the, uh, with the Cypher Labs, which will last a lot longer. I didn't really touch a lot of, uh, on the prices, so let's go over that real quickly. I did mention that the uh, PHA3 from Sony is around $399 street price. The Fostex HPP1 is at $549. The new Cypher Labs uh, combination unit is at $899. The Solo R and Solo DP, DB are priced at $499 and $699 for the DB. Um, the package price for the uh, JH Audio, uh, depending on finish, fit and finishes uh, for your IMs, because you can do all kinds of custom artwork and colors on them, we'll just say is in around the $1,300 price range um, for, the, uh, for the IMs, and then you have to pay for the amplifier as well. So you're looking up, up around uh, the $2,000 mark. The IQ V1 is $549, and the IQ V3 is $699. You'll notice on all of these products that we've got a lot of cables connecting different pieces together. And some of them are very flexible. For instance, this is our Silver Dragon V1 LOD cable, and we've got multiple connection types on here. We've got the micro USB, we've got the mini USB, and we've got an, uh, an Apple Lightning to micro adapter. So this cable can not only be used with your Apple product with a new Lightning connection, but you can also use it with your Samsung if you've got one of those as well. We're making a whole host of LOD cables, uh, LODs for USB-A to 30-pin, the old uh, Apple standard that's got a lot of uh, um, still good use out of, as well as the 30-dock LOD 
to the uh, mini USB. This one's used primarily with the Cypher Lab stuff. We're also going through the Apple certification process right now to be able to do lightning to USB cables. Uh, one must note that also with these new lightning cables, you will no longer be able to pull uh, an analog signal. It's only digital. So you need to make sure that if you're going with a lightning cable that you understand this one can only be used in a digital, a digital format. We've also created a new low profile mini to mini cable. A lot of you have asked us for a very short low profile cable. Uh, we've created a plastic injection mold that's very small that will fit inside the very tight tolerances of your iPhone cases. It's also very short. Currently we've got them at four and a half inches. We're going to be making some shorter ones, maybe at around three inches. Please feel free to give us some of the numbers that you would like to see the links being. Um, as well as on this piece, we're using a Black Dragon mini coax cable to pull a digital signal from the Solo uh, R from Cypher Labs into the iCube. As you can see, there are different terminations here. We've got RCA and a four-pole digital connector for the iCube. This is the same connector that's also used for the JH3A. So as you can see, we have a whole host of different connections that we can make for you. Uh, Custom is basically our middle name. If it can be built, we will try and build it for you. So thanks for watching this video on portable uh, headphone amp DACs. If you have any questions or want to know more about all of these products, please go to our blog at moon-audio.com backslash just ask group. If there's any uh, specifications you might want us to build for you or any other uh, specific questions on these products, feel free to let me know.